I'm going to drop it in here. The cell phone one is simple. It has an empty default style sheet. But Hilo and Lanai are a little bit more complex. All I have to do to enable a particular theme is go to the web config file. It's the first time you're seeing this. This is an XML file that controls all the settings for our site. Now we're going to be in here a few times, so I'm going to take out some of the comments so you can see just the pieces that we care about. I need to add a small section called pages. And notice I'm getting IntelliSense, which is something new in the web config file. The one I want to add is themes. And I'll turn on Lanai. So let's see what the customer page looks like now. Now I have a, a default background color, but notice the control itself has a different font and a different style. That's because I'm using this thing called a skin file. Now a skin allows you to, it's like, it's like a style sheet, but for ASP.NET controls. And you can see I have special settings here for grid view or menu or even images. Okay, so we've got style sheets. Let me show you one more. I'll show you what Hilo looks like. You view the customer page. Great. Okay, now that we have themes, let's go a little bit farther and start to really flesh out the design of our site. I really want a template. And in ASP.NET 2.0, we have this concept called master pages, which serve as our overall site template. So I'm going to create a master page. Now, in this very simple website, our master page will look something like Northwinds customer portal and at the top of most sites we have some kind of header and at the bottom we'll have a footer we can put some basic information like copyright 2006 north winds sample and in between the two we'll have some content that's wrapped by another div tag like a menu and for the menu I'll also put some kind of placeholder. So link 1 and link 2 and finally our last div section is for the content itself. Now here's where master pages really come in handy. Actually I think I've, let's see, I press control KD to get the automatic formatting and you can see I'm just double checking all my div tags and they all look okay. Now this content placeholder, if I drag and put this inside the content section, that's the little hole that my other pages need to fill in. Let me show you the design view. Now the design view looks pretty plain. It's not actually picking up our style sheet. That's because I need to go back here and put the style sheet theme equal to Hilo as well. Now when I view my master page, have it refresh, you can see my, my style sheet is also picking up and allows me to see it in the master page. But this is where our content's going to go. Well, let's go ahead and add a content page. I just right click, choose Add Content Page. I'm going to need a login page at some point, so let's just do it now. Login.aspx. For now, I'll just give it some basic, just some default content. So um, I already have some basic HTML on the clipboard. I'll go ahead and paste that in and save it. So great, now we have a, a placeholder for our login page, and we've got a couple of other pages. Now I want to show you how to apply this master pages to pages we've already built. And I'll just do it for one of them. If I go to the customers page, and I really just care about the stuff that's supposed to show up in the content area, which is the, uh, the grid view and the data source. So I'm going to take that and put it on the clipboard, and delete all this other HTML junk, and make sure my page is derived from the master page right there. And by switching to design view, I get this content placeholder. I need to instantiate it. Now I have a place to put that HTML back from the clipboard. So I just paste it right back in and save it. Now I have the I have the content. Now obviously this is something you probably want to do. You want to have your master pages created ahead of time. It's going to be handy. Um, I'm going to close all these pages and in fact delete the customer page that I just made and the orders page because I already have the master pages applied right here. And I've also put them inside two folders. So if I go inside secure admin, there's the customer page that we just did inside the master page template. I also have a secure members folder. And the reason why I've put these two in folders is because I don't really want any person to be able to see the customer list and I only want the orders to be visible by the people that are authenticated. So inside the orders page, I've already put in a little bit of code here that takes care of mapping depending on who's logged in. 
So what this really means is we need to add some kind of security or membership to our site. And I'm going to do that by turning on or going to the ASP.NET configuration. So notice that when I go to this site or when I go to a regular page, remember I don't have IIS installed, so it's using its own built-in web server. And it's on a local port that's only accessible to this local page, but it makes it really easy to develop without having IIS. Well here you can see I've got security setups and provider and application information. I'm going to start by going to the security tab and configure our login information. So in the security wizard, we'll go to the first step and we'll make it so we can log in from the internet with forms. We'll skip that. And we'll turn on roles for our site. And we're only going to have one role, and that's the administrator role. So I'll create that now. Okay, I'll create an account for myself. And the email is handy because if you forget your password, there's a way the system will automatically mail you your password if you answer your secret question, which is, what is your favorite color? It's red. No, blue. All right, next step. Now this page was the reason why I segregated the uh, customer and orders table into their own folders. So the secure admin folder, I can apply a role now and say I will only allow access if you're in this role, if the user is attached to that role, and for any other user I'm going to deny access to it. Now for the members folder where we have the orders page, I'm going to deny access to any anonymous user. So those three rules should cover it. So I can finish the wizard here. And I have to do one more step. I need to put the Scott account into the admin role. So there he is. Now I'm done with the website administration. Now some of the things that it did behind the scenes, it created a new database for me and you can go in there and look it's got all the login information it's quite secured and locked down the two folders members and admin I have a web config that holds the uh, configuration information for me but I didn't have to do any of that it, that wizard did it all for me now I need to actually log in and test it well this is a good time to go back and actually make the login page work so a good spot to put the login control will be right here switch to design view and there's a lot going on with with login really there's um, a whole series of controls that I want to show you under the login tab we have something called a login view and login view is very interesting because it will switch its contents depending on whether you're anonymous or you're logged in so if you're anonymous you want to see the login dialog which it builds for me now when the login uh, th there's a lot of customization you can do with the login control there's a lot of different styles and formattings that you can choose from. The only thing I want to change here is that when it's finished, to simply redirect everything back to this page. And that's because if I switch the login, once I'm authenticated, then I want it to say something like, in the login view, it'll say, welcome back. Or And later on, I'll put some more information in there, but that's good for now. Another control I want to show you is this login status. I want to put the login button on the page, but I want it to be on all the pages, which means I need to go edit the master page. And up here inside the uh, the header, that will be a good spot to put this, this information. So if I can just drag in the login status right here and save it, now I can view my login control and test it. So we can log in as Scott. And it should come back and say welcome back and now I have my logout button right here good now let's test one of our non administrator users but I can't because I don't have them created yet so a quick solution for that is to add a registration page and this is where having that master page really comes in handy let's add a new content page called register and inside the registration page I simply need to drag over the create new user wizard control Again, this is, this is another control that's very deep and has lots of customization features. The only thing I need to modify for this is that when it's finished, when it's complete, I simply want it to redirect back into the login page. 
and that's all I need to do to create a new user with the site.